Scott Durkin, and I'm gonna tell you what makes this the Trail Reaper. Well, the very first time I went to the King of the Hammers. It was 2012, I believe. And when I went down there and watched those rigs, it blew my world wide open in a sense that, wait, they can go fast too? You can run these kinds of trails and you can go fast to the desert? That's what I wanna do. That's what I want my Jeep to do. That just sounds like so much fun. So uh, the very next year, some buddies um, uh, of mine and I uh, started a team and we race in the uh, Everyman Challenge, just as a local team up here from Big Bear. And over the years of being around the speed element of things, suspension, geometry, that's when I started to kind of formulate my own idea of what I could do with my Jeep. There were five basic parameters that I ended up coming up with. I wanted it to be street legal and be able to drive around town. When you first looked at it, I wanted you to still recognize it as a Jeep and not it become like some tube buggy or some kind of Frankenstein machine. I wanted to be able to run all the main, you know, trails in the hammers. But then I also wanted to be able to run as fast as this motor can push it through the desert, being able to hit whoops, jump it. And the last is I wanted to be able to get up back door. And back door still has eluded me to this day, but that's gonna happen. That's gonna happen. It was about two years of a uh, process of thinking about parts and what I wanted to do and started to collect the parts that I was gonna need to make this happen. Uh, I found a fabricator, Camp Rock Fabrication, down in Lucerne Valley. I had met with those guys several times with my ideas and they were like, yeah, we can do this and it sounds cool. And we built it in four months. And that was burning the candle on both ends, for sure. It was going to be debuted at Forest Fest. And so we were turning and burning because there's so much custom work in this thing. Put it in the booth and the very next day, it was leading the trail for the John Bull run. And, uh, and I've got, you know, 30 people behind me expecting it to do amazing things. Little did they know, we hadn't even plumbed the lockers yet, you know? <laughs> and, uh, uh, when I built this machine, that just changed my trajectory and I started getting involved in the Jeep industry. I was going to events, going to shows. You know, the, this thing was on display at SEMA. In January of this year, I signed with Rockstar Garage. And with that was kind of just a, a whole new ball of wax. Obviously the wheel and tire combo dramatically changed the look of the Jeep. The Mickey Thompson Pro XS that just came out really fit the persona of the Trail Reaper and how aggressive it is. And then the performance on the rocks is definitely what kept me on the tire. Because I was honestly a bit on the fence. I thought it might be just too much tire. I drive it around town. It's my daily driver up here. And we have a bunch of trails up here. And you won't have to put it on the trailer to do that. Um, so having a tire that performs on the street it's legal on the street, but then can withstand the speed and the rocks and the constant abuse and the amount of wheeling that, that I do in, in any given year it is a lot for a tire to do both well. And the tire compound is, is awesome. It really is awesome. It really does handle the street. We're smooth and quiet, but that the traction that it has on the rocks and in the wet situations too is by far, it's the best wet running tire I've ever run. I am running fuel wheels. I've been with fuel actually for three years. I was running the 17 inch Anza beadlock. Been a great wheel. I have beat that thing to, to smithereens um, and they held up. They're still sitting in my garage right now. These though, I went to a 20 inch wheel um, because of the size of the tire. I was going to a 43 inch tall tire. I wanted to keep that sidewall, kind of the, the proportions the same for the speed stuff. So a 20 inch beadlock, and these are a full forged wheel too. So they 
because of the speed stuff, because sometimes I make mistakes and I hit a rock really hard on the side, um, I need a wheel that's gonna be able to, to take those kinds of impacts. So that full forged uh, wheel, true beadlock has been performing outstanding. The axles are junkyard axles. They're nothing fancy. I mean, that's, I went, I, I had to keep it cheap, right? We're building on a budget. At least I've built on a budget. I think most of you guys out there do too. The, it's a high pinion Dana 60, Ford off of like a Ford F250, F350. It's geared uh, 538. It's got a uh, Yukon ring and pinion locker and uh, axle shafts, chromoly, just beefed up all the way across, trust it. And then it's got the Artec skid on there too that I've got the Ram mounted on. Uh, just everything to bolster this thing up because it just beat it up so bad. And then it's got uh, Jesse Haynes high steer kit on it as well, trying to get the, the steering up. I ended up deciding to go to full hydro steering. It's simplified geometry. When you're in full articulation, you end up losing like uh, some, your steering, the, the way the linkage all works together. When you're full hydro, it is attached to the axle, it doesn't matter what orientation that axle is in, you're steering, nothing changes. Everything is in line. Uh, the rear axle is a corporate 14 volt. Again, one ton junkyard. Uh, I just like, it's such a great, strong axle right out of, you know, I mean, that you can just pick up just about anywhere, find parts for it anywhere. So I went with the corporate 14 bolt. Uh, I did shave it. Yukon, uh, again, Yukon uh, ring and pinion, uh, same with lockers and uh, chrome molly axle shafts. Disc conversion on it too. It was a, a drum brake, went to discs and it's trussed with a Artec. It's got an Artec truss on, on the rear. Although they are heavy, Oh boy, let me tell you, they're heavy. They have, have been proven to be bulletproof. I haven't broken anything on them. Well, that's not true. I did break upper ball joint with Tony Pellegrino on uh, out of the hammers on uh, Highway 20, I think. We snapped that thing. It was a bit catastrophic, but we actually ran into town, got to do 100 miles an hour in Terramoto. <laughs> which was made all of it worth it. <laughs> and then uh, uh, ran into town, got parts, got tools. Mark stayed back, stripped the thing down right where, because she was dead in the water. And we were back off the trail. I think it was like in three hours, three and a half hours we were done. We made it, we were back before it even got dark. Other than that though, the thing is bit like the axles have really held up and been bulletproof. The cage, the foundation of the cage is a poison spider cage, but it was a builder's kit. It, it was the foundation, if you will, and then all the modification came after the fact. We used the cage um, to integrate the suspension system. There's a lot of extra tubing, support and structure, tying it to the frame. These are 2.5 inch King coilovers, 16 inch travel in both, uh, and it's a 2.5 inch triple bypass coupled with the 2.5 coilover and two inch bump stops. And that's on all four corners. So this has 16 inches of travel front and rear. I wanted that because I knew I wanted to go fast in the whoops, I wanted to jump it, and I wanted to have that up travel. That was a big engineering challenge is to have a 16 inch travel shock and try and keep, you know, you have seven inches of up travel, but yet at the same time, the Jeep not be super tall you have it sitting low, try and keep that low center of gravity for that, that stable platform in the rocks. And that's why the shocks actually go through the hood. Running this lar long of a shock body, how much travel, and having the thing sit as low as I could, I had to run them up through the uh, hood and the front, and they go through the body in the, the rear. We lifted the motor, Motor has a one inch lift on there, gain the, the up travel. And that was a lot of, it took a lot to figure all that stuff out. Cause I mean, there's a lot of people running long shocks, right? Long travel shocks. And they've got like, you know, three, four inches of up travel and it's all, you know, and it's all troop. And that's fine if you're rock crawling, you're low, you're stable, that's great. It's not great for going fast. <laughs> going through those extra steps and taking that extra time and that frustration 
uh, we'll all has paid off now and, and it's totally worth it. I've actually retained the stock motor in this. This has the four liter inline six. I put a Sprintec supercharger on there to help move this machine. One, cause I mean, I'm, I like to go fast, but I also added a lot of weight when I lifted this thing up. Moving 43 inch tall tires, that is a ton to ask from a stock motor. Putting that, sprit, that supercharger on there was a game changer, no doubt. And then behind that, I've got the six speed manual transmission. A lot of people don't realize that this is a manual. And so there's a lot more driving that's happening for me um, in, in, the, uh, in the cab when I'm rock crawling and when I'm going fast, um, having to select gears, shifting, you know, clutching, all those kind of things. Because I was running the stock motor, which is gonna be a smaller displacement motor, I mean, I knew I was gonna be kind of behind in the power game, even adding my uh, supercharger. I went with an Atlas, but I went with the Atlas IV. The Atlas IV gave me a whole nother set of gears to be able to run through. So it's got a uh, 2.7 to one planetary gear in front of the transfer case. And then the transfer case is a 3.8 to one and then if I put those together, that gives me a 10.4 to one crawl ratio, which is unreal. And then you couple that with my six speed manual transmission, that gives me 24 forward gears to run through. And I do use them all. And then behind that, I've got, uh, I had to do full custom drive shafts. I've got uh, High Desert Driveline custom uh, drive shafts, both front and rear. With my motor, I put a supercharger on it. So now it's no longer naturally aspirated. It sucks air in something fierce when it's spooled up. I was running kind of a, dude, one of those just cheap like cone filters that I could, got at Pet Boys or something. I was like, oh, this will work. You know, this is gonna get me through it. You put the supercharger on there and it don't do it. Um, so I went to a K&N um, and I actually kind of, I don't know, if, I, I, I don't know if they have like a scale or a ratio of like filter size to your, I just got a big old cone there because I knew it was sucking in a lot of air. It definitely, actually, it actually made a difference. I could feel the motor running. It was getting the air that it needed um, a lot better, uh, especially on the uh, higher RPM where that thing was really spooled up and really drawing the air in. <laughs> Switched all my fenders to Genrite fenders. Um, it's actually kind of like one of the best things I've done as far as like aesthetics go, I feel like. As simple as it is, the fenders changed the body lines quite a bit, really cleaned it up, went all aluminum, helped me lighten things up. My old fenders, I had to completely custom fabricate to make them fit these 42 inch tires with all the suspension travel, have them stuff all the way up. Genrite had just come out with these fenders that I didn't have to touch them. They bolted right on and fit a 43 inch tall Mickey. And that was like one of the best things ever because it's stronger and it was simpler and they actually, it looks better. It's got a Genrite gas tank on there. That was really key in stretching it. You can't just leave the big, you know, the, the stock tank on there and Genrite makes a great tank that's pocketed for that rear differential. That was a must and has been on the Jeep now for three years and hasn't failed me at all. <laughs> the Reaper actually has a one inch body lift. There's a right way to do it and there's a wrong way to do it. And the wrong way to do it is just to get one of those puck kits, right? Well, you get that lift, but you leave that body mount hanging down. Genrite actually makes a kit that you shave your factory ones off and they move the mount up that inch with no pucks. And it's just your rock slider, you just slide on and you don't catch on those, those hang points. And it's such a subtle thing that nobody sees, nobody knows about. Um, and they work really well. Oh, shit. Well, recovery is a huge part of what we do. Um, and the reality of it is, I feel as though it allows us to do a lot of the things that we do because I, it was one of the first modifications I did to my Jeep. I threw some rock sliders on it and I put a winch on it so I could just start running trails. All of a sudden you have this confidence of like, well, I'll try it because if it doesn't work out, I'll just pull myself out. 
Um, I think Warren makes the best winches. I've been out with other people that have had other winches that have failed, and I've never had my Warren let me down. It's a 10,000 pound winch because my Jeep is significantly heavier. Run the synthetic line. I will never run anything other than a Warren. This is a Factor 55 Ultra Hook. It had the hook capability to it, but then also has the eye. So running any type of a soft shackle or D-ring, um, you can run everything through there, but then it stores really well. Super clean, comes back, you know, gets sucked in, and then they, they came out with these rope guards, which helps prevent any, even that, even the little bit that's exposed here from getting hit. And if you look at that rope guard, oh, she's been hit hard. <laughs> yeah, there's some nasty rash on there. So the rope guard has already paid for itself. <laughs> Went to the Baja Design Lights. Love this look that's happening here. <laughs> um, really, that is why with this light bar, I'm not gonna lie, is because this cool like backlighting amber light thing. <laughs> you know, I feel I feel kind of like, God, it should be all performance because that's what I'm about and it truly is. And they're great light, it's a great like light bar and everything, but I really like the little backlighting <laughs> feature to it. You know what? I was resistant to power tank. I was not into the whole power tank thing seemed like it was expensive i had to refill it that's a pain i'm just gonna run a compressor and then uh, a buddy of mine was like dude you have got to run a power tank because i had gone to 42s and it was just i was i burned up my my compressor trying to fill these things up i will never go back never <laughs> It is the greatest thing since sliced bread, dude. It is the most like, it is the unsung hero. So I've got a 20 pound tank. I've filled up 15, 20 tires and I haven't refilled the thing yet. It lasts a long time. You can fill a ton of tires with the thing. And look at the volume of these ones, right? It does it so fast. It's so simple. Dude, I'll never go back. In cab safety, I am running a uh, Mastercraft. Seats, I've got a bench seat in the back because I got two little dudes that I like to take out with me. And so put in a four point harness system on this bench seat right in the back. And then uh, the front uh, Mastercraft standard bucket seat setup. Five point harnesses, they're uh, the Corbo harness uh, with the quarter turn deal. It works pretty good. The seats are like a cloth material. I'd rather have a different material that's easier to wipe out, um, you know, when I get mud on it and stuff like that. The cloth is a pain in the butt. The quarter turn is actually pretty cool, like that kind of seat buckle uh, deal, as opposed to like dealing with the, the clasps and stuff. So far, I mean, you know, not, I've stayed inside the vehicle, even though I've rolled it a few times. I've hung from the, I've hung from the belts, so they work. <laughs> For electronics, I've got the Bantam S-Pod uh, control and all that. Right now, I've got all my lights uh, set up on it. And then I've got separate switches running um, like a direct feeds for my lockers. When I signed with Rockstar, they're like, you don't have any SCO stuff. You gotta get some SCO stuff. It's like, all right, well, what does it do? And then they like took me over to like one of the rigs, right? They showed, showed me the rigs, like, look what you can do with your phone, click. You know, look what you can do with this, click, click. Actually, the first thing I got it for was actually the microphone on my race radio. I had that thing on Velcro. I had a piece, a strip of Velcro that I double-sided tape Velcro, like stuck straight to my dash. Yeah, oh, dude, this thing, this thing sucked. <laughs> it really did, it looked really bad. And uh, put the put the skosh mount on there and put the magnet on the back, to, oh my gosh. Again, game changer. I'm not looking, trying to find the Velcro or whatever, I just like, almost like half throw it and it just whoop, <laughs> and sticks to it. So that's what sold me on Skosh was my, was my mount for my microphone. Did I've got my tablet on there, never had that thing come off. And I mean, I've jumped it with the tablet on there, never, have never lost it. And then uh, GoPro mounts, man. I mean, they've got two mounts that you can just put anywhere and move super easy. So there's GoPro mounts that I've put all over this thing with filming that we do. Um, I've got GoPro mounts underneath in the cage and haven't lost a GoPro yet. We were worried about it, but uh, haven't haven't lost it yet. I mean, that's including running whoops at 50 miles an hour, like big like whoops, 
50 mile, miles an hour and the mount stayed, the GoPro stayed underneath the car. <laughs> This has, has always been just a passion uh, of mine. Um, building this thing was 100% was just gonna be for me. Just cause I love to do it and I wanted to do, um, build something that could do everything I wanted to do. All the people that I'm meeting in the industry, going to events, you know, people that come up to me who've seen the Jeep or follow the build, that's kind of been the biggest payoff for me really is I've really enjoyed kind of inspiring people. That's been uh, something I wasn't necessarily planning, but I've, through social media, I've had a lot of people reaching out to me and, oh, that, that's how I want to make my Jeep, or how did you do this? Why did you do that? And kind of helping, giving people ideas of how I've done things and it shaping their builds. If I can keep doing what I'm doing, meeting people, going different places, and, and living the, the Jeep lifestyle, that's the end game right there. So if you wanna see more of the Trail Reaper, uh, you can find it on Rockstar Garage on their YouTube page, and then Instagram, The Trail Reaper. I'm posting all the time. You can follow it and uh, see where this thing's going, where I'm going, and come see it for yourself. Ha <laughs> ha!